All right, well, I'm not gonna do the live thing this time. I, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I can save that video. I wanted to put it on my, on my YouTube page just as an ex, you know, to explain how one of those things works. And I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can get the video off of it. But anyways, um, I, I'm just gonna do a regular video on this one and then I'll just upload it to uh, Facebook and um, put it on my YouTube page. So anyways, uh, th this, I got my two sheds. That's where all my lawn equipment is. And um, my buddy Jim had the, uh, the A4 in his big shop down in, in Athens, Ohio for, gosh, ever since Eric left, which it was down there for maybe five or six years. And he, he, he wanted his shop space back. So he's like, hey, uh, hey Matt, can you come get the uh, A4 out of here? And I didn't have any place to put it because it, it's too big to go through the doors of that shed. And uh, it won't go through, it won't fit in my garage, it's so big. So basically I had this whole shed uh, specifically built just to put the, uh, the A4 in. Um, which if we ever sell it or if Eric comes back, it'll, it'll come out of the shed and I'll have, a, I'll, I'll have a ton more space. I'll be able to use the shed. But um, right now basically it, my bikes and... The uh, A car are in here, and uh, I was saying in the other video, the um, all the the gas tank. When I put this thing away a couple years ago, the gas tank was leaking on it, and not not real bad, but just a steady drip. It was like drip, 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 and uh, so I ran all the gas out of it, and I haven't put gas back in it since, but. Um, yeah, this is the A car. It's. I wish I could get a better, better video of it, um, so, or from the side and stuff, so you could just see how big it is. It's way bigger than the other one. Um, we got Jim built a set of racks for it. It's got the trailer hitch on it. Uh, the lights, brake lights are up there, and then it's got a set of curtains on it. Those curtains come off of here and they they fold down. So if it's raining and stuff. The, the, you know, you can put the curtains, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have done that. Now I'm not going to get it back up. Uh, you can put the curtains down, um, which we actually, darn it, sorry about that. Uh, we actually used them in West Virginia one time. It rained the entire run, and if it weren't for those curtains, um, gosh, it would have been a mess. Uh, so this is the motor, uh, I was saying, um, it's got a four-cylinder Ford engine. The little compartment pops off, and then this whole thing lifts up, and you can get in there from that way, too. And then we have everything kind of labeled on this one. Those are the uh, trailer lights, the choke, the strobe on top, front lights, back lights, the dome lights, uh, the dash uh, lights that up. And there's This one actually has a key. We had a key ignition on this one. And that's the horn button. And then this lever over here is the forward and reverse, not that one, this one, is the forward and reverse lever. So if you push it forward, uh, it goes forward. If you have it in the back position like that, um, that's, that's back. So it goes in reverse. That's the brake. And then this one has a, uh, it's a manual transmission, so you got to shift it. And it's got four different gears and a, and a reverse gear. So actually... If you have it in reverse and put it in reverse in, on, on this thing, it'll actually go forward. Or if you have it in the forward gear and put this in reverse, it'll go in reverse. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And this one actually, instead of a hand clutch, this one has a foot clutch. Um, the battery sits under here and the gas tank's right there too. That's the one that's leaking. I need to take it out and bring it some, to someone. I have the, the lid off and I, did, I just need to get it uh, repaired. Um, that's the first aid kit, which actually is a stock uh, box that I found from Canadian National. It was their uh, uh, stock uh, first aid kit, so I thought it was pretty fitting. And then uh, they got these, uh, th this is hilarious, just read this for a second. Uh, the, the, basically it says if you get caught on drinking at work or on drugs, you can be subject to dismissal. And then there's an exception, the Rule G bypass. 
which is pretty much how we always operated this thing is with the, the little <laughs> bypass. And that's original, I kept that. Um, there's the builder plate with the uh, serial number and all that stuff. Um, again, we had a couple different radios on this one. Um, those are the wipers up there. Oh, and these things here, those are actually sanders. So if you're on wet or slippery rails, um, you can, hopefully you can see this, you can throw this switch right here. It's just a manual valve and you lift that up and that thing's full of sand and uh, the sand drops out of a tube underneath the tire here and uh, it gives you traction. So if you're slipping going up a, up a, a hill or something or upgrade and, and the wheels are spinning, you can actually drop a little sand on the rails and it, this thing just takes off like crazy. It's, it's pretty awesome. And then uh, these are, I don't know if you can see them tucked in there. They fold in, but they're uh, locomotive mirrors. So you have two big mirrors that stick out on either side of it. So you can see the cars behind you or, you know, whatever you need to, what, whatever you need to see behind you when you're going. Um, oh, and since it's Father's Day, I remember uh, when I rebuilt this car, my dad uh, came over one afternoon and kind of helped me or whatever. And this, uh, this whole spot on the floor here, it's all open underneath. So he helped me kind of design like a, a in floor storage space. So we sat down and tried to think how to, uh, the bottom isn't in it right now, but um, we sat down and tried to figure out how to maximize that space uh, so we could put like, you know, jumper cables and all that kind of crap in there. Um, so yeah, he helped me kind of figure that out and then we had to cut everything and, but it, it was a fun project. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this thing other than it, it needs love. I mean, it, it would run right now. I guarantee it. A fire extinguisher up there. Oh, there's all my, my toe straps, the battery box. Um, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll post, uh, a couple of, uh, pictures of this thing so you can kind of see it from the side and stuff a little bit better. But the, the brake system, it works the same way as the one on the MT. It's just the bars are bigger and stuff. Um, gosh, I can't, can't think of anything else to, to say about it. I ran all the wiring up there for the, this thing, this thing was a, quite the project, but... It turned out pretty awesome, I, I think. I don't know. I, it's sad that we don't get to use them anymore. That's maybe if Eric moves back. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. I can't do it by myself. So, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. I'm forgetting about this thing. I just told you about the curtains on the sides. Uh, I don't know. This thing. This is where we put the toolbox on this rack on the back it's got a rack on the front too um oh the body's all made out of aluminum on this one the the body on the mt14 is actually fiberglass where this one's uh actually aluminum so when i uh when i restored this thing i was like how am i going to get the paint to stick to aluminum and uh dad dad uh had a buddy who restored airplanes and of course you know, most Cessna airplanes are all made out of aluminum. So he uh, ended up getting me some aluminum primer, which I don't think you can go to just TSC and buy that. Maybe you can now. I don't know. But, um, yeah, he got me like, I don't know, 20 cans of aluminum primer. And this thing, I had it shined up like a, I mean, it was looked like the inside of a pop can when I did it. And then uh, I hit it with that aluminum primer. And then I, this is actually, um, these things were, uh, what they call the color, I think it's Fairmont orange or safety orange or something. But, uh, when I redid this thing, uh, I actually just went to, uh, TSC and bought Kubota, cans of Kubota orange. So this thing's actually a little bit, color is just a little bit off from what it should be, but it, it's pretty close. I mean, only the true rail nerds would even think to... Uh, <laughs> to know the difference between the colors. Um, oh, the, one of the other cool things is, I 
don't know if I can, oh, this thing's heavy. I don't know what's in there. But the the uh, numbers and all the stuff on it, I made, I hand cut stencils out. And uh, like, like those numbers, I hand cut them out. I don't even know what that 3DB or BD means. Maybe the section it was on or something. But uh, I hand did all the sten stencils on it. And I, it, they turned out really cool because they look like something the railroad would actually do. Other than, I mean, a lot of the guys, they, they, they put like uh, paint jobs on these things like a brand new show car. And they're real, you know, crisp and nice. And it looks like you could wax them and stuff. Where this thing, it's got a little patina to it. Um, which is how they would have been on the railroad. I mean, they weren't perfect on the railroad. They actually used these things to, to work with. So, you know, they, they would put stencils on them like that and uh, all sorts of stuff. Oh, another thing we did uh, is we built these little, uh, I don't know, the running boards or something, and they're removable. So uh, they slide in and you can pull them out and uh, the whole thing comes out. But it's nice, when, that, when this thing's sitting up on the rails, it's actually a pretty big step to get up in this thing because you got to get over this uh, lip here on the side. So it really helps having those things on there, which back in the day we never did. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, one thing, we, we have a, had a, a big giant speaker here. So when you were on the radio, the, it would come over. It obviously comes out of the radio up there, but it would come over the, the PA system on the side of the car. So you could hear this thing. We'd crank it, that speaker up. And you could hear it a mile away. And we you, we also had a, uh, a car radio on there. So you could put music out of it and stuff. It was pretty cool going down the rails playing Ozzy's Crazy Train or something. Which we, we did. And the guys at these runs thought we were probably crazy. But um, they're all a bunch of old, co old coots. But uh, what else did we have? Oh, there's dome lights in here. Uh... That's the, the little motor that runs the little compressor for the horn. Uh, yeah, I think I did a decent job of explaining everything. Oh, that's that's the brake switch. So it's a normally off switch. So the brake lights aren't on when that lever's pulled. But when you take the brakes off and that lever gets pushed in. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I just said that backwards. Right now, the brake lights would be on. And then when, when this thing is off... The lever would be in, and then the lights would be off. And then these little floor panels come out, so you can access all the... We have a little more storage down there and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool machine. This one's... This one, if you ride on the, the MT-14, it, it feels like you're on a little lawnmower or something. This thing, actually, when you're driving it or riding in it, it feels like a real piece of rail equipment. I mean, and it is obviously but i mean it just feel i mean you feel like you're in a locomotive or something this thing's so big and heavy duty it, it's it's just a world of difference between the ride that this thing has and the the ride on the mt14 oh oh one other thing too this is what they call an a4 and uh they made an a4e and the e i i think it stands for like extra wide or something and it's like four inches wider like this part is, like down here, it's four inches wider, so it would stick out to like here on each side. And it doesn't, it, it weighs a little more and stuff, um, but it doesn't do much more than just give you a, a little more room inside, which this thing holds four dudes extremely comfortably, uh, where the other one, you could put four guys in it, but you're kind of cramped once you get your cooler and your, you know, all your equipment and stuff in there a toolbox and all that stuff you, you you know you're you're a little tight where this one you could put six dudes in this one and still have space to, you know left over uh so anyways uh hope uh hope you guys enjoyed the uh uh explanation of of the 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 Fairmont MT14 and this uh Fairmont A car um one day it'll it'll be back out on the rails there's very little wrong with it it just Needs to be run, and um, just need the guys to do it, I guess. So, anyways, uh, if you like this video and you're watching it on YouTube, give it the thumbs up and share my page, cause I'm gonna I'm gonna try to retire <laughs> and be a YouTuber. No, not really, but um, it would be cool to have some more followers on my page. I I have a, a few already, which why anyone would follow me on YouTube is 
beyond me, but um, I do have some cool stuff, <laughs> I guess. But one of these days we'll get this thing back out on the rails and uh, enjoy, guys.